Good morning, Year 6. It's Mr Nicholson here for your daily English lesson. Just can't believe how quickly this term is going. We've only got a few days left now until the half-term break. Um, so pause the video, please. Today's date is Tuesday the 9th of February, and the title is Subject Verb Agreement. OK, welcome back. So today we're going to spend a little bit of time um, looking at ensuring that when we write or we speak, our subjects and our verbs agree so that our sentences make sense. Let's have a look at some of the rules then when we're using a singular subject. What do you notice about the subject and verb in these sentences? Thomas likes milk, a hen lays eggs. Let's have a little think about that one. See if you can spot the subject and the verb. Okay, so in that first sentence, the subject is Thomas and the verb is likes. And in the second one, the subject is a hen and the verb is lays. And hopefully you notice that when the subject is singular, when there's just one of them, so there's just one Thomas or one hen, there's an S on the end of the verb. And that S makes sure that the singular subject is followed by the singular form of the verb. So if you said Thomas like milk or a hen lay eggs, it would not be correct. Let's have a look at the rules for when there is plural. And plural is when, when there's more than one of something. So here, instead of mouse, we've got the plural mice. And instead of child, we've got the plural children. Do you notice anything about the subject and the verb in these sentences? Have a little think. OK, so in that first sentence, we would use the verb run and not runs, so that it agrees with the subject, the mice. The mice run from the cat. And in the second one, you might have noticed that the verb is not follows, it's follow. The S has been taken away. The children follow the Pied Piper. A plural subject has to be followed by the plural form of the verb. So just to remind you, if the subject is singular, the verb must be singular. And if the subject is plural, the verb must be plural. And to form the plural of the verb, in the present tense, you should remove the S from the singular form. So if I give you an example up here, so if there was just one person uh, catching, you would say, for example, Mike catches the ball. If there were more than one person catching, if it becomes plural, um, so if you're saying the boys, you would say the boys catch the ball. Okay, You wouldn't say the boys catches the ball. That would not be correct. Uh, there are some tricky bits when we're using the verb for to be. So when it's singular, you would use the uh, form is, am, or was. I am feeling excited. He was very gentle. She is playing tennis. It is a bright summer's day. Okay? Um, you would not say I is feeling excited. That wouldn't make sense. Or I were feeling excited. When we look at the plural form of using the verb to be, to make sure that our subject and verbs agree, we must use either are or were. So you wouldn't say we is excited, you would say we are excited. Uh, you wouldn't say you was all in deep trouble, you would have to write you were all in deep trouble. And you wouldn't say they is playing all day. To be grammatically correct, you would need to say they are playing all day. Or if you're in the past tense, they were playing all day. OK, let's have a look at some warm-up questions then on this topic. So I'd like you to write the short subheading warm-up question one in your English books and have a go at that question. Can you match the pair of verbs that should complete that sentence correctly? If you could write the sentence in blue, and fill it in using one of those pairs of verbs. Pause the video, have a go, and then press play when you want to check your answer. OK, the pair of verbs that would um, make this sentence correct would be Mum and Carol were certain that they had heard the air raid siren. Carol was feeling very frightened. You would need were because you've got two people, so it's plural, and then at the end you would need was because it's just Carol on her own. It's singular. Can you write warm-up question two into your English books now, please? 
And for this question, what you will need to do is choose one verb from each pair. So we've got we going on holiday to Spain, and you need to choose is or are. I packing my swimming costume and towel in my suitcase, and you need to choose is or am. Can you figure out which one to use and write those two sentences into your English books, please? And then press play again on the video when you want to check. OK, welcome back here, six. So we should have gone for we are going on holiday to Spain um, because the uh, subject we is plural. And for the second one, you should have gone for I am packing my swimming costume and towel in my suitcase because this time it's singular. We are, I am. Well done if you got that right. We'll just try one more. What you need to do for warm-up question three is to fill these four blank spaces using the correct subjects. Read the sentences very carefully and check whether you need um, a singular or plural subject to match the verbs. OK, good luck with that one and then come back to the video when you finish that activity. Right, let's have a look at the answers then. The first one, we would need a plural because we've got the verb enjoy, so Sid and Violet would work well in that sentence. The second one, we would also need a plural because we've got the verb were, so bicycles would work brilliantly there. We need a singular um, subject for the third one because we've got was stuck, so coach would work well, leaving Marcy um, as a singular subject to agree with the verb works. Sid and Violet enjoy playing board games. The bicycles were parked outside the bus station. The coach was stuck in a traffic jam. Marcy works hard during maths lessons. So if you could tick or cross those four that you did, please, so that when you send photos into your teachers, uh, they can see how you did with that warm-up question. OK, I'm hopeful that you're feeling confident now with the subject verb agreement. And we're going to try um, an independent activity now. So I'm just going to bring it up on the screen. Um, so subject verb agreement, time to practice your knowledge of this. Uh, the first activity, you've got to find and fix the mistakes. So there are 10 sentences on the screen here, and they are all wrong. And what you need to do is write them out correctly, please. So I'll do the first one for you. The first one says, she walked to the market. Now, to make sure the subject and verbs agree for that first sentence, you would need to say, and um, for this activity, you would need to write this in your English books, she walks to the market. So you would need to add an S to the verb walks. OK, so that's an example for the first one. And it's a similar thing all the way through. All 10 of those sentences have mistakes. And I want you to correct them and write them properly, please. Pause the video and spend 10, 15 minutes having a go at those. And then I'll show you the last few questions. OK, let's have a look at the last thing that you need to do then. So this time you've got um, a space in the sentence and you need to fill the verb in. Now, it depends whether you're writing in past or present tense. So there's a couple of options each time. But I'll do the first one for you. Um, John and Mary. Now, we've got two people there. So I'm not going to use... Mm, I'm not going to use were. John and Mary, oh, I am actually. John and Mary were knocking on the door. No, that would work because there's two people. So John and Mary were knocking on the door. That would work really nicely. Or I could say, because I've got two people, John and Mary are knocking on the door. It depends what text I'm in. But I wouldn't say John and Mary is knocking on the door or John and Mary was knocking on the door. So for that one, you would choose um, were or are. And you have to do a similar thing for 2, 3, 4 and 5. Choose a verb that will fit into those sentences. OK, when you've done that activity, um, that's all for this morning's English lesson. So I'd really appreciate it if you could post a photo of your work into your class teacher and they will have a look at your sentences and see if you've done all that correctly. OK, so hopefully this morning's lesson has given you a chance to really think about making sure 
our written sentences and our speech um, is grammatically correct um, because it's important um, that we write and we speak well. And a key thing to do that is to make sure that the subject and the verbs agree when we're writing and when we're speaking. Okay, not long to go now, um, but as I always say, thank you so much for tuning into YouTube this morning and having a go at that English lesson. Um, all the Year 6 teachers are really proud of your efforts. Um, yeah, and I'll, um, I'll speak to you again soon. All the best. Bye-bye.